So as I mentioned yesterday, after my um, 171st Derby recap, Barack Bakar is no longer the manager of Red Star Belgrade. He has been let go. He has been sacked by the management for poor results. And I haven't been able to, it's still morning here in Toronto. Um, I still haven't been able to watch or follow um, Zezan Terzic's uh, press conference. But he said if, if uh, Barack Bahar had won the uh, defeated Partizan in the Derby, he would have kept his job. I firmly believe that even if he drew in the Derby, he would have kept his job. I think the worst case scenario for him was bowing out of Europe and not getting a, a result in the Derby. Like those two, at the end of the day, didn't mix together. And he ended up getting uh, sacked. So, like I said, the, the Derby real, really sealed his fate. Not advancing to at least the Europa League, I think, was a big hit as well. Because a lot of money has been invested in the club uh, this past summer. And there's really nothing to show for it. And, yeah, the team just invested a lot of money and didn't get the results, necessary results that they needed. And even Champions League, if you look at it as a whole, right? The only one draw out of six matches isn't good enough with the amount of money that we had invested. Start off very well. Uh, we ended up winning that friendly tournament in Russia where everything looked like it was going to be great. You know, there were some players that were playing in different positions that really started to blossom. All the new players that we had signed were really good. Jean-Philippe Crasso was excellent up top. Him and Olenka looked like they had a really good partnership. So everything was going well. Fiorentina 5-0 at home in the last friendly of the match. Um, 16 goals in the first four matches of the regular season of the domestic league, and then two losses to Vordovac and Trukadicki in a three in a three match span is kind of where everything started going wrong for the team. It's when there was a significant drop off uh, in the level of play from the players, which still to this day I can't believe that 11, you know, 11 starters, your entire starting lineup has a drop in form, which is crazy to think. Usually. You know, you have a starting lineup where there's two or three guys who are out of form and then the other guys are in form or playing well. And you just kind of rotate those guys that are struggling. Didn't happen this time. The entire team went out of form. And that's honestly when it started to fall apart. Then you started the Champions League. A uh, very tough group. And yeah, it just kind of escalated from there and just went downhill. Um, Brock Bacher never really found out the right formation, right? He kept playing three at the back, which wasn't the answer for us. When we would play three at the back, we had players on the wing back positions who weren't used to playing that position. Um, we sold um, Irakli Azarov to Shakhtar Donetsk, who could have been a left back for us going forward. Um, Stefan Mitrovic started the season very well. He hasn't played almost at all in the last, you know, 10 matches or so, if not longer. Edmund Nado hasn't been a part of the team at all. Um, Alex Vigo, same same issue as, as Edmund Nado. We used Sujan Mihailovic as a right back or a right wing back, which was not the answer in terms of creativity in his offensive game. He just that's just not something that he possesses. He's great as a as a defensive mid, which is his position. He's really good as a center back as well, which he showed that he can play um, in this half of the season. But using him at 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 different positions like right back and left back is a little bit wild. It's, it's it's tough to ask a guy to play four or five different positions at the same level, and he couldn't do that, and that's no fault of his own. I mean, I've said it before. He's not going to say no if Barack Bacher tells him, hey, do you want to play right back or whatever. Of course, he's a professional footballer. He's not going to say no. Uh, so, yeah, and I think all that started from Mialovic playing really well again in that first Man City match in the Champions League, and it felt like Barack Bacher couldn't take him out of the lineup because he felt like he owed him something. So, um, yeah, it's just didn't work out for him at the different positions. The, the players who were signed, I guess, and Minato, if you want to put him into that, didn't play at all. Alex Vigo, who we thought was a right back going forward, didn't play as well. So he's probably going to be going, not probably, he's going back to Argentina after his loan finishes right now. I th it's done, I think, at the end of December. So he's going to be gone. Um, so yeah, uh, his press conferences, interviews were very bleak. Like it's, it's, he gives you the bare minimum. If you win, we play good. We could have maybe scored a little bit more goals. If we lose, we played poorly. We didn't score enough. We didn't take our chances. It was all just very, he gives you kind of like the bare minimum. Um, I didn't really get that from him in, in his first press conference when he um, when he joined Red Star and he had his first press conference. I didn't really, I really didn't really get that. He really went into depth with his, with his, some of his answers and um, 
yeah, so so it feels like that aspect of a change. It might it's maybe something that doesn't bother a lot of people, but it does bother me when you know you you just give us the bare minimum of kind of what your expectations are. Um, no no emotion on touchline either. Like we've and we kind of knew this before he took over the team that his assistants have a big part to play uh, in his management. Uh, so maybe it's not that surprising, but I thought that he would be a little bit emotional, uh, show a little bit of more emotion on, on the touchline. He didn't really do that. It looked like he didn't even talk to the players when he was on the touchline. I think that's a problem as well. Uh, in the last month or so, rumors escalated that he's not the one who leads the training sessions either. It's his staff and he's up in the office. That's an issue as well. There's a real disconnect there with the players, whether they like him or not, or, or I don't know if this works for him or. It maybe worked for him in Israel, but I don't think it's going to work in other big European clubs where you need to have a, a, a invested um, connection with with the players on the pitch. The the thing that I'll say about him, uh, the good thing, the positive is that he gave the youth a chance, right? Like Jovan Miatovic, um, Kostan Adelkovic, who's now firmly the right back for this team going forward. Um, Knezhevic has has gotten minutes. Uh, Shlivic has played a little bit as well, so he has given the youth. Um, a chance to to showcase their skills and to show what they're about, and this is like the first time in a derby I can remember that two young players, two younger players, I guess, really got a chance to show what they're about. I think Stankovic had Marko Lazetic and someone else who was also like an eighteen and nineteen year old um, receive playing time in the derby. That was like I think two three seasons ago. Um, that's one of the few things I I would say that um, that he did well. The, another thing is. I think that no matter if he was down, he would try to go up more offensive. Like if the team was down in, in the 70th minute, whether that's Champions League or the domestic league, he's throwing on offensive players because at this point there's not really much to lose. You're trying to chase a result. I think he did that very well as well, even though he didn't work out in most cases. Um, but I think I like that mentality of always wanting to at least draw the match no matter who you're playing. Um, I don't think he ever realized how much pressure he was under once he got here. And I, I don't think that's a fault of his own. I just don't think that he r really realized what was expected of the club and how hard it would be to get there. Um, biggest budget in club's history. Two of the biggest signings in um, the team's history with um, Sheriff NDI and Mbom Huang. Uh, the players that they added in Jean-Philippe Crasso and Olainka all have track records of previously playing really well at their past te at, at the past teams that they played for. Um, so I don't know if he, I feel like he just didn't realize how much pressure he was under. Like, and that's again, something that I'm going to go back to the press conference stuff. He would never talk about that sort of stuff. So I'm not sure that he realized how much pressure he was really under once he got the job and what was expected of him. And I want, I just wonder if he ever realized that he could lose his job at the end of the first half of the season. Like that's something that I legitimately wonder if, if, if he realized he was ever in danger of losing the job. I don't know. Um, I'm curious to see where he goes next. I'll follow his progress um, and kind of see where he goes. I posted that he was sacked on, on Twitter or X or whatever you want to call it. And a lot of Besiktas fans started commenting that they want Barak Bakar at their team. So I guess the Turkish league is one to follow in terms of that. Uh, but I will follow. I usually follow every manager when he gets a new job elsewhere uh, to see how they're doing and, and the results that they're achieving. And best of luck to him. It didn't work out for him. Hopefully he succeeds at, it, succeeds at his next job. Um, and I hope he does well, but it just didn't work out for him. And in my opinion, I think it's a deserved sacking. Um, you, you don't progress through in, in the European League, uh, in, in, in Europe, in the Champions League, nor Europa League, and you lose the Derby to what people are calling one of the, not worst Partizan teams, but not a very good Partizan team. So... And you and we've invested so much, and there was a lot of talking before the game from some of the players. And yeah, um, I, I, in my opinion, I think it was a deserved sacking. He was all like I said, he was always going to lose his job if he lost the derby and didn't go through in Europe. All he needed was was at least a draw here. I think if he gets a draw here, he doesn't he doesn't get a, get sacked, and he's back for the second half of the season. And yeah, um, so let me guys let me know in the comments what you think about the sacking. Who should be the next manager? Looks like Vlad Milovic is the only candidate as of right now. I would like to see Marko Nejic, who is the um, the manager of Grafitrad, who is Red Star's affiliate. He's only 33 years old. But we in the world of football, it looks like managers are getting younger and younger. So I would give him a chance. 
Uh, so let me know who you think the next uh, manager should be and uh, how you see the team going forward.